How many people here have actually heard of the Savannah Bananas? Wow, thank you. I was speaking to a similar group like this six months ago, and just one person in the back was clapping. It was my dad. So we've certainly come a long way, but for the people that don't know, share a little context, and then let's get to the, how this applies to your business, your firm. So after years of running a baseball team with my wife for 10 years, we saw, thought it was a great decision that we should go into over a million dollars in debt. So we bought an expansion franchise in Savannah, Georgia in 2015. We had this big vision to take on this team and change baseball and make it fun. But that vision didn't come to fruition at all in the beginning. It was myself, my wife, our 24-year-old team president, three 22-year-olds straight out of college that started that team. What a crew we had. And we showed up and we had this big vision, but we only sold a couple tickets in our first three months. To be specific, we sold two total tickets in three months. That's not a good business model. It was so bad that by January of 2016, we got a phone call that we had overdrafted our, our, overdrafted our account, we were completely out of money, and my wife and I had to sell our house and empty out our savings account and put money into the team. We were down to our last dollar. We were grocery shopping with just $30 a week. That's all we had. And we failed because we were selling like everyone else, we were marketing like everyone else, we were acting like everyone else. It wasn't until finally he said, we gotta go big. We gotta create attention in a different way. So we're gonna name the team after a fruit. And so we became the Savannah Bananas, but it wasn't just naming the team the Bananas. We said we could have a senior citizen dance team called the Banana Nanas. We could have a male cheerleading team called the Mananas. Now they're just the dad bod cheerleading squad. We could name our mascot Split. We could have music videos to can't stop the peeling. We could have promotions where we throw bananas in people's pants and it's called Banana in the Pants. We had a lot of crazy ideas, but we knew we had to get people to care. And you can't get the hearts until you get the eyes and the ears of your customers. So we had to create attention. We named the team the Savannah Bananas, and I'll never forget that day, February 25th, 2016, when we announced the team was the Bananas. Everybody hated it. They said, the owner should be thrown out of town. You guys are an embarrassment to the city. You'll never sell a ticket. Leave our town now. It was brutal. Tons of criticism, but we knew if we could just get to opening night, get them to see the experience, that we could convert and create some fans. So finally, it got to opening night, and we somehow sold the game out, because enough people were hoping that we might fail. And they showed up at that first game, and we were wearing green uniforms because we weren't quite ripe. <laughs> and we made six errors. We played terrible. There was a rain delay. It was a disaster in every, every way possible but they watched as our players went into the crowd and delivered roses to little girls. They watched the Banana Nanas dance. They watched us lift up a baby in a banana costume up like this and sing, na Savania, na he. They watched the whole show. And by the end of that night, they told everybody. And since that game, back our first opening game in 2016, we've been so fortunate to sell out every single game. Our wait list is about to hit 200,000 for tickets. We're traveling on a world tour. And most importantly, my wife and I are now sleeping on a real bed. So thank you for applauding our misery. Thank you. So what changed? What was the big difference? And how does it apply to you? There were two words that we focused on. It's the name of the company. It's fans first. Fans first, entertainment, everything we do is about fans. We have fans now. I remember one of our last games, a family came up to me, a father, a wife, and three kids, and they said, that was so much fun. And I go, oh, did you come into town for this? They said, yeah, we drove 40 hours from Utah for this game, and we're driving 40 hours back tomorrow. In my mind, I'm like, what is wrong with you? Who would drive 40 hours for a game? We now have a wait list for the banana baby. Even before people are even, their baby's not even born yet. They're calling us to get on the wait list for their banana baby. We have over 100 people that have tattoos of our logo. What would that look like if your law firm, if people are getting tattoos of your firm because they love you guys so much? How do we do that? How do we create that? So what does that look like? I'll share a quick video to share where we came from to where we are now and how you can create fans. It's over. The Savannah Bananas should not exist today. You can't name any of the players. They play in a 1920s ballpark with no ads or billboards. They play in kilts, stilts, and stilettos. They even have an all-grandma dance team. Everything we do is unconventional. 
None of it should work. But it does. ESPN calls the Bananas the greatest show in baseball. I could care less about baseball until this, <laughs> this came about. Do you want to play the same game as everyone else? Stop chasing customers. Start creating fans. This is the behind the peel story of how it all happened. This is Fans First. Okay, so now when you think about the future of business, I believe the future of business is not based on how many customers you have or how many clients you have, it's based on how many fans you have. Customers are transactional, they come and go, but fans never leave. And right now, it's one of the most competitive times ever in business. There's thousands of store closures, iconic brands, Sears, Circuit City, Blockbuster, they're all a distant memory. Because they had thousands and millions of customers, but they didn't have fans to keep the business going. So how do we do that? How do we create that? What Michael and the team and Chris here, they're outstanding in marketing. I've seen some of your stories, what you guys are doing from a marketing standpoint, it's unbelievable. Here's the truth about us. We spend zero dollars on marketing, zero. But we spend everything on the experience. The most powerful form of marketing is when your customers, your clients and your fans are doing that for you. 